Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and I want to check in on my oldest system. The oldest system of mine has been undergoing horizontal migration for 30 days now, except I let the first wave of it go for 22 days, way too long I believe, because by the time we got back in there, there were pretty much no leftovers, no scraps of bedding, no food, not even that little partition divider that I put in there. It all got nibbled away. So we rebuilt it, and that was only eight days ago. So figured maybe if we check in now, maybe we'll see a little bit more leftovers, maybe even a little bit more worm activity there too. Because it also seemed to me like maybe the worms had dispersed. Maybe they came in there quickly, gobbled everything up, and then just scattered again. Because it didn't seem like the migration zone was really a concentration of worms. And the oldest of my bins, if you're familiar with my arrangement system, would normally be, you know, up there on that top left position. That's actually the new bin that I've been talking about us needing to build at some point because of my oldest bin being so close to harvest and stuff. But the question remains, well, where is <laughs> my oldest bin? Well, for that, we need to back off a little bit. We got to kind of come out of my wormery. And over here in the darkness is one of the spots where I usually film my time lapses. And we had decided to do a little test with this setup here. Since we're rebuilding the feeding zone anyway, we had an opportunity to do some bedding test. So we used some beddings that we thought might heat up more than average bedding. And we stuck thermometers in the two sides where one side had been using a type of conventional bedding that I usually use with more hard, tough types of bedding materials. And the other side, the side over there with a the little red coin on it, that's the side we suspected might run a little hotter because it was using some of those softer kind of napkins and tissues and paper towel type um, materials. But that was eight days ago we set that thing up. I wasn't quite sure how long to wait in terms of, you know, trying to observe whether or not a um, any sort of heating up occurs. But after eight days, not only did I want to get back into the horizontal feeding zone a little earlier than 22 days like I did last time, I also wanted to, you know, check in and see how this temperature testing was doing and I can also see a whole bunch of bright light peeking out around the glass of this old phone <laughs> that's um, functioning as our time-lapse camera it seems like the battery inside the device is probably heated up or swelled up or whatever and is pushing the whole phone apart so it is probably about time that we uh, bring a close to this time-lapse and I guess the real question that remains is are we going to see anything on those uh, thermometers in terms of one side going up or at least anything you know I'm not sure if it's even going to be visible on the um, the video but that makes it official I just shut down the time lapse after eight days and we'll have to see how that goes but the next stop for this bin is up on my bench so we can get in there and see how the horizontal migration is doing and we're probably going to have to replenish it at least that's my guess so let's get it over to the bench and see how things are coming along I'm sure you could see it now. This phone has seen better days. <laughs> so the glass, the screen is um, separated so far that it's even letting some of the backlight that usually illuminates the screen leak out and it even sort of dulls the appearance of what's on the screen. And I guess just so you could see what's on the screen is what was being shot. It's these two thermometers being observed over the course of the past eight days to see what happened. So I'm curious to see. I think I'm actually going to take a break and, and take a look what this video turned out like and see if we can actually see anything on these thermometers. If not, it's not the end of the world. Uh, I'm going to take a quick look at this. So we'll take a break and maybe while I'm upstairs we'll get some food because i got a feeling we're going to be resetting this feeding zone anyway. So i um, definitely curious to see what this turned out like. Try as I might, I couldn't really see anything happening as far as the temperature reading on these thermometers, but I guess it was interesting to watch how they both dropped down into the bedding as the bedding below and the food below was being consumed. So at least we got to see something, even though it wasn't what we were hoping to see. So I really couldn't tell you. I have no idea if any temperature changes occurred over on this side of the bin where the, uh, here, the red, <laughs> the red coin had been positioned to show us that this was where he had put these types of beddings I was referring to earlier. So. What I was referring to earlier is just this sort of stuff. Piece of paper towel, a couple pieces of paper towel, a, a napkin, a fancy napkin. <laughs> These are the ones I haul home from my mom's house every time I eat there. And yeah, I've eaten there a few times if you haven't noticed. <laughs> Although I'll grab a few of them anyway from the table if they're not too dirty and bring them home. So 
you know, I, I guess in hindsight, maybe I should have just removed these thermometers from their little enclosures, but it seemed like they were pretty easily visible through their enclosures. So that's the reason I just left them in there protected. Um, so I'm not sure, you know. For some reason it did seem like it might be visible, but on the camera I saw really no signs of any anything going on, you know. So I, I guess it's sort of a failed test. We didn't get a chance to see really what happened down in the feeding zone as far as temperature changes over the past eight days, but at least we'll get a chance to see what happened in terms of decomposition of the materials we left for them. So, yeah, like I said before, last time we had set up one of these dividers just like this with all the holes in it so the worms can get through. We had set up bedding and food and everything else, and after 22 days coming back in here, we found nothing. So after eight days, I was hoping that we'd find some leftovers, so it's not surprising that we are finding some leftovers. But it's a whole bunch of castings. Once you start peeling back some of this paper on top, it's pretty much only castings down here. So it does seem like they pretty much ripped right through whatever food was placed in here for them. Wow, look at all these worms. Jeez Louise. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that bin that I set up as a place to potentially move worms to has only been sitting there for a couple days, and I, I suppose if we wanted to start hauling worms out, we certainly could. And I didn't really anticipate such a great turnout, and it's maybe just because of the results last time. How, after eight days, it seemed like when we came back in here, there was just... Lots of castings, but not a lot of worm action. And a lot of worm action out in the general compost. So it does seem like 22 days is way too long to wait. By that time, the worms will have already cleared out all the available resources that you've laid out for them, and they'll keep moving, looking for more. But it does seem like this eight-day interval here was a pretty good amount of time to get a pretty good worm turnout over here. We gave them worm chow, we gave them some green, leafy, frozen veggies. I'm not sure we're going to see any of that. The only things I'm really seeing are these napkins, a couple of these cardboard tubes that were laid in here, and a whole bunch of castings. Everything else seems like it was gobbled up. Wow. It almost seems like a shame to leave all these worms just mobbed together over here in this feeding zone. I mean, there's a little bit of bedding left for them, these large chunks that didn't break down, but it does seem like all that small, all that small shredded stuff that was in here for them did get nibbled down to a large degree. I mean, I'm definitely seeing bits of it here and there blended in with the castings and with the worms. So they didn't do away with all of it, so there's definitely still stuff for them to be nibbling on in here. Wow, so many worms, such a good turnout. So, I, I really didn't want to do a haul out today, I'm... I'm just going to stick to that. I really wanted to just replenish this. And I, I even kind of on my board that I created for this here. Yeah, I did create a board. <laughs> I was very tempted at this point to maybe even stop treating this as 30 days of migrating with the dot, dot, dot. And almost treat this as more of a, a temporary wedge or a mini wedge sort, sort of setup. Because I do feel like we started out with the castings being a lot more damp in here than they needed to be. Which would usually result in worms not clearing out just staying in the castings for a long long time until the material got drier and then once the moisture had left soon after the worms would do the same but as long as the stuff is this nice and damp over here it does feel like the one thing we can do to really promote worm evacuation is to just till it up and air it out and I kind of do like the, the way that wedge approach worked the last time I did it not too long ago with another of my batches of worms. We kept nudging the, the highly finished and worked material further and further over, further allowing it to dry over time, and we just kept expanding the side of the bin that was getting the fresh feedings, and in the end the material on the finished end did dry out to the point where it did go pretty much um, completely evacuated. I think in the end I might have set up one final little roundup attempt with some sort of a baiting station and I did pull out a few dozen worms in the end but um, after a period of time during which the finished castings did dry out considerably the worms did all exit the stuff and then we were able to bring it to a close pretty gracefully but it did require a good bit of time so uh, after only 30 days of migration, or if we were to start doing wedge style, I would think, you know, it might take another 
Uh, it's really hard to say, you know, because the material is nice and flaky, and I don't even know if it's that terribly damp anymore. It, it flakes apart nicely. I think if we, you know, perhaps come in here on a more regular basis, once again, definitely more frequently than 22 days, but if we come in here perhaps in another eight days, like we did this time, in another week or so, and if we still find that the material has a good moisture content, we'll just give it another till and let the process continue. Maybe further enhance the side of the bin where we want the worms to come over to by putting in fresh bedding, fresh food for them, and uh, maybe manage this one as a little bit of a wedge for a while too. I think that'll work pretty nicely. Even though the castings are really beautiful, I also suspect that there's probably a good number of cocoons floating around in here too. And I think by leaving enough time as part of this little mini wedge, wedge setup and drying period for this material, it also feels to me like I do permit the nursery function to occur as well. So any, any cocoons that are being left behind by the worms that are gradually making their way over to where the food and fresh bedding is being provided um, are given time to hatch and the babies to eventually catch up with their parents. Uh, ultimately leaving to a batch of materials that does to me feel like it's actually harvestable and free of any cocoons that still have the potential for babies to come crawling out of them. So I think we managed to aerate the entire contents of this side of the bin. We also blended in some of the more dry material that we had out on the surface, which I think will also further result in um, the damp stuff that it got blended in with getting a bit drier all very nice and flaky. None of it is really clumping together. Here and there I, you know, find a little piece that almost feels like a, a little boulder, but it doesn't even want to stick together. It just falls apart from me rolling it around in my palm. So definitely not in a position where there's surplus or excess moisture. I think it's kind of at that point where the worms, you know, still really like it and really don't have um, a huge amount of motivation to leave it. But if we let it continue this way, in time I believe it will get to that point where the worms will try to start seeking out something a little bit better for themselves. So I like how this is kind of working too. This is fortunate that we still have our little divider wall. I'm not even trying to divide really, I keep repeating that, but I want to stress that it's really not here to prevent anything from getting from one side to the other. It's full of holes for the exact opposite reason, because we want the worms to go through it freely and easily. I just like having it so I can see where our feeding zone begins and where our finished castings are. So here we got a good amount of stuff that we can sort of rebuild with if we want to recycle, and I think we should. You know, we'll take all the stuff that's already kind of finished castings and the worms, and we'll take all this reusable large chunk bedding materials that they didn't quite finish off yet and we could use it as the basis for the rebuild of the feeding area. I think I can also bring in some more bedding. I can even bring in those napkins if I wanted to and I guess this time we're not going to bother with trying to monitor temperatures down in the feeding area based on the bedding type that we had. It would have been interesting to see but it really didn't pique my interest to that point. If it had been easier to get the camera to see what we wanted it to see then great but I really couldn't figure out why it didn't see what we wanted it to see or capture what we wanted it to capture I don't know maybe I could prototype it offline a little bit and if I can come up with some sort of a solution that does give us visibility into what we're interested in seeing maybe I could try it again but for now we're not repeating it we're not continuing it we're just gonna reset this thing sort of further increasing the size of the edge of the bin where we want them to keep coming over to and over time, maybe things on that side will dry further. So let me, oh, I didn't bring any food down for them when I ran upstairs. <laughs> so I do need to go back to the fridge upstairs, get some delicious morsels that we can rebuild their feeding zone with, and then we'll get back to work on this. Maybe we'll even use some of this. What do you think? So this assortment that I came up with for them seems like a lot, but it doesn't have a lot of weight. And I noticed that a big chunk of it is um, sort of those big, nasty outer leaves of the head of lettuce that you peel off and then you eat the better ones on the inside. There's a pretty nice big chunk of cucumber right here. I saw an orange peel. There's some mushroom. There's even a 
piece of an apple in here I see so this is a pretty nice variety of different types of foods and we've got the coffee that I bought down too it's right here and we've got all that bedding I've even got worm chow so my idea originally was oh man this thing looks so big do we really want to make a feeding zone this large and then I started thinking to myself yeah why not let's do it let's let's make this almost like I mean at this point if you look at it we're almost at that halfway through the the bin point you know and it's true I, I do feel like we're not going to have enough to build this whole thing out completely so I, be I believe we are going to end up pushing it back in this direction a little bit and then we'll be able to backfill this and let the level of this drop a little bit too but it does feel like we could significantly increase the size of the uh, the feeding area in here without any sort of problems so I'm thinking we're going to do just that so let's come in here with some bedding to start with stuff we could pile all this yummy food onto maybe we'll do a few layers you know let them have some bedding mixed with some food and maybe even I can grab some grit to really spice up this feeding area for them so here I think I spilled out about half of what was in here here's some I guess some raspberries maybe not sure what these are cucumber peels orange peels Here's that chunk of apple I saw earlier. Not bad. And it did seem like some of the more damp stuff was just sticking directly to our frozen bits. I was just curious to see if any worms had gotten accidentally frozen to the frozen foods. <laughs> Which is one of those sort of concerns that you see people always talking about when they put frozen foods into their worm bins. How it's like, oh my goodness, let's be careful not to freeze our worms, but. Uh, something tells me that they can probably wriggle away from being in contact with something that's frozen. It wouldn't be their end, or at least, well, I don't know. I can't say that for sure, but to me it just seems like it's probably not too much of a hazard. Oops. Well, our test is done. We'll get this red coin out of here that was showing us the side that we thought would heat up. The stuff I have here is crushed eggshell. It's always a nice thing to include in their diet as grit and I've also got my worm chow which I believe they like too so it seems like when I mix kitchen scraps with bedding with grit with worm chow all these different things even these old nicely seasoned bedding bits I got a feeling we're creating an environment that the wormies really dig so the thing is that we're kind of hitting capacity and I've got whole bunch more food to drop in here still I think we only added about half of it and well, maybe we'll create sort of like a little cover for it in a way to try to suppress some of its odors just in case any sort of passerby insects might think to check something out if, if they were to sense its odors all these delicious foods and stuff down low I think if we kind of mask it and cover it this way then the worms down below will be able to zero in on it and come over to enjoy it but any little passerby insects might be less prone to notice and I don't know it seems like it seems like it'll be kind of nice to put a little bit more in here but then I feel like I'm out of stuff to cover up with unless I were to just yeah you know I don't want to go overboard I could always throw this stuff right back into the freezer I think we got it about half of the half of it in here um, you know it was not only the stuff that was in here it was also the worm chow it was also the coffee so it did increase the amount of stuff that we put in here and well you know I guess since these are African night crawlers as they do go crazy over their bedding maybe we can just kind of sweeten up this top layer of bedding with just a little bit more worm chow make sure this jumbled up piece is broken up a little bit better cover it up again and now maybe we can come back in here with some of this stuff that we removed from the edge bring it back over I know lots and lots of worms getting piled right on top of the food that we bought for them it does feel like maybe a little bit more bedding in here wouldn't hurt so you know why don't I grab some of my prepared bedding it does seem like the right way to go and I don't want to have to fill a huge section so maybe we'll just bring the whole shebang in a little bit as well 
So it might not be quite as big as I had anticipated or had hoped that we can get it to be, but this looks pretty nice, none the same. I would hope that you agree. And then after we start backfilling, we'll just have a, a greater surface area out here to promote further drying of the material. Although I'm starting to feel like oh, not a whole lot of more drying is going to be needed before the worms might start, you know, wanting to get out of here and find themselves something better. Because um, as nice and cozy as it seems right now, it is going to continue to dry uncovered gradually. And if we keep coming in here to air it out a little bit, fluff it up, that will also help promote it drying. And then over here, we've already got so many worms, but I do feel like we should give them a little bit more stuff to cruise around in and get comfortable in. So it does feel inevitable. We're going to have to throw more bedding in here. I really feel that that's the the best bet you know and I've got a few more of these soiled napkins this one had that coffee resting right there on it I do kind of like the idea of maybe creating the top layers of this stuff out of layers to sort of help with keeping the moisture down within it just by its own nature even without the plastic coverings I mean we will put the plastic coverings but I like the idea of the system being constructed of materials that on their own you know promote the retention of the moisture content within it not having to rely so much on the plastic even the plastic is key you know it is doing a, a big job down here keeping the moisture down so let's bring the plastic back and I think we're pretty much done are we done well we're done for now we're definitely not going to wait another 22 days before the next time we come back in here and we're not going to be doing a temperature test in here either so we can get rid of these thermometer holder clips and the power line <laughs> holding clips we're kind of back to a vanilla worm bin here that's undergoing horizontal migration I'll get this stuff back up in the freezer and take care of everything else that needs putting away and cleaning up but I'm not going to keep you around for that because that's boring before I go let me really quickly say thank you thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel all right everyone thanks for watching have a great day bye now